of goosebump just still struck me even after I watched it. <laughs> well, ladies and gentlemen, Karissa Surya Anatomy Hadja from Guma Citra Nusantara. Well, welcome to the See the Story segment, part of the 3 hour news show. Now that was just a teaser because we we're going to have a fruitful discussion because many may not know that Indonesia has a national heroine named Kamala Hayati. Now she was the very first Achenese woman to rank as admiral in the Sultanate of Aceh Darussalam. That's right. Now interestingly, the story of Kamala Hayati's life and struggles has now been brought to the theater stage in a musical entitled Kamala Hayati Laskar Inong Bali. Now the show tells the story of Admiral Kamala Hayati's struggles of the war in the waters of Haru Bay between the Portuguese and the Sultanate of Aceh Darussalam. And now, as you uh, saw before and also you heard that amazing voice, uh, we're going to talk to Karisa Surya Natamiharja as well as Junio Fernandez and Abia Sabita from the comfort of their, uh, of their homes. Hi everyone! Uh, probably I want to say thank you for Carissa for being here. Thank you for your time and also for your amazing voice. <laughs> uh, I cannot just get over that. Junio and um, Abia, thank you so much as well for your time. Hello. Our pleasure. Okay. Now, first of all, I want to congratulate you all for um, Kamala Hayati Laskar Inong Bale. That was staged on Saturday. I went there. And, um, you know, coming from a musical background or theater background, I was like, I was so stunned. And uh, that sparked some, you know, some longing... Uh, to uh, join on stage! I know, to join right. on stage! <laughs> now, Carissa, uh, you can now see that many younger generations have started to shift their interest into um, traditional arts, let's say, including dance. Um, how does uh, Gemma Citra Nusantara introduce the Indonesian archipelago through uh, traditional dance? Um, so, in Gumachi Nusantara, we have always um, embodied the spirit of, you know, Indonesian traditional culture, mm. in dance, in arts, and in, in music. Um, and, you know, our focus is, well, ba it's basically um, all around Indonesia. Mm -hmm. However, our main um, basic, our basic focus is still on an Acehnese dance. Mm -hmm. So like when you start or when you begin your journey in, in Gemacitra Nusantara, you start with Aceh first. And mm -hmm. when we heard about the story of Kamala Hayati and you know that she is from Aceh herself, mm -hmm. it's 
struck us like immediately, you know, like, oh my God, this is something that we have to represent, we have to do, we have to tell her story in a way that is, you know, in traditional, uh, in a way that is, tr you know, traditional and, uh, you know, contemporary at the same time, but still maintaining the Achehni. <laughs> now, I, I wanted to ask Ms. Junio this because, um, how did you become involved in this project? And this is your first one with Gamachitra, uh, Gamachitra Nusantara. How did it feel for you to be part of, you know, the family? I was honored, of course, because, uh, well, I was actually the last actor to be called from uh, for the role, actually. <laughs> but then I don't believe in that coincidence, so I guess it's just <laughs> meant to be. <laughs> and thankfully, the, the director had good faith in me, and since we worked together in several projects before, and, and yes, I only know uh, Gemma Chitra Nusantara recently, to be honest, but then I instantly felt that uh, I was part of the, this humbling family of yours, uh, and I'm so honored to be a part of the show. Oh, yeah. mm -hmm. So cool. Wow, you know, that, that, that is very cool. You know, I did not see it, guys. Hopefully I can see it again. <laughs> but <laughs> I, I, wanted, I wanted to ask uh, Abia here. So, you know, you are the younger generation uh, yeah, and the future generation, uh, you know, of Indonesia. How do you see uh, the movement of, you know, uh, cultural preservation, historical preservation through the movement of cultural and dance? You know, in my view, uh, we have to support the movement of cultural preservation, especially in traditional dance. And as the young and future generation, I feel like I have a bigger responsibility to preserve our culture. and. Nowadays, it seems to me that traditional dance doesn't get as much exposure as modern dance. But I'm really happy to say Gechan has played a huge role to promote Indonesian culture, which I'm very happy. <laughs> wow. <laughs> Pro probably, uh, this is a, a very basic question about, about the musical. Um, I don't know whoever can uh, answer this to represent uh, the whole Gemma Nusantara. Why did you choose Kamala Hayati in the first place for, for, for this play? Um, I think I can answer that question. Um, so, uh, first of all, not many people know about her or oh. about you know her presence mm -hmm. and, and her role as a heroine. And mm -hmm. she's only been um, claimed as a national hero in mm -hmm. 2017, I believe. Mm -hmm. So it's very recent, and she, in her lifetime, she lived in you know in the 16th century. Or, yeah, yeah. You know, mm -hmm. so um, it took a very long time for us to acknowledge and appreciate her name and um you know her story is so strong and inspirational and that you know you need we need to tell her story um and i guess that's one of the one of the reasons why we drove to you know to want to mm. and also uh, like like we uh, could uh, we could see in the in the uh, show uh, of kamala hayati laskar inombale you are actually supported fully by the Indonesian Navy. Can you actually uh, tell us more about that? Yes, yeah, so um, she's actually uh, an inspiration to our Indonesian Navy. Mm -hmm. um, so, so I think our leader of Gumachitra Nusantara, which is Mira Aris Munandar, she, she thought instantly, you know, um, there is an, an actual ship named after her, mm. and mm. she's an inspiration to all of, uh, you know, Indonesian Army, uh, well, in the, in the Indonesian Navy. And so, mm -hmm. um, when we brought our concept of uh, theater and musical theater to well, tell the story, um, they were really, really interested, in, mm. and their involvement was very big uh, as well. So they were very supportive of it. And wow. also later that uh, uh, little that did we know, um, lots of people in uh, the armed forces could actually sing very well. Mm -hmm. And also they, they play they play instruments. Yeah. Wow. There was an orchestra, there was a band. I know. And that was amazing. Wow. Was wow. Amazing. My next question is, uh, as Junio, you know, the villain. Right. <laughs> the villain. <laughs> uh, was Junio played Cornelis de Hoodman, which is one of the main villains, and I think he successfully did it because so many people hated Cornelis in yes. this particular musical. <laughs> yes, I'm sorry for your dad. <laughs> <laughs> so what, you know, <laughs> what was the most challenging part about playing Cornelis de Hoodman, uh, specifically for this, uh, you know, theater, musical theater? 
Well, uh, the hardest part. Uh, well, uh, the composer Leonard, a very dear friend of mine, is a very good musician. Uh, he always comes up with something. Well, you might say that the notes were quite unpredictable, but I loved it. The fighting scene was actually one of my biggest challenge. You know, uh, Carissa here. Well, she knows what I've struggled with because <laughs> I have to master the choreography of the fights of the swords. <laughs> she helped me a lot, Carissa here. Thank you so much, Carissa, for being uh, there for me, you know, keeping up with me. Uh, and Desma as well, one of the uh, Carissa's friend, Kamala Hayati's friend. And last but not least, the makeup process, my gosh. Oh, I had yeah. to be... You went blonde. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You, know, you went blonde. For yeah, I was, I was blonde, literally. All, all the way to my head. You see right here, I don't have any hair much, <laughs> but still, they wanted me to be blonde all the way to the beard, to the mustache and everything. So, well, that was uh, by far the longest makeup process I have ever had uh, during my experience in musical theater. How so that was, was challenging, I think. How long was it? About uh, 30 to 45 minutes. Hmm. That's long. And I, they, they, have, they <laughs> had to, had to cover my eyes they had to cover my nose they had to cover everything to spray those white sprays you know white paint to to my face and so i had troubles breathing and all that but i enjoyed it actually because all the makeup artists were great and well, there you go you had cornelius the hot man on stage well junio you have to hang out more with these ladies to know how long is long for makeup? <laughs> <laughs> or <is> you? <laughs> or me? <laughs> you know, that's very interesting. You know, all of you perform uh, very well here. But I have a question for uh, Abia. Uh, you know, your involvement in dance and uh, a traditional dance. What has inspired you to join, uh, you know, to learn traditional dance, Abia? You know, so um, I actually spent my early childhood years abroad, not in Indonesia. Mm. And the only place I could experience Indonesian culture was when I was surrounded by Indonesian culture. Wow. And yeah, so one of the first aspects of Indonesian culture that was introduced to me was traditional dance. Mm. So from the, a very young age, you know, yes. I've been doing traditional dance, I've been performing on stage at the embassy, so mm. that's where I really fell in love with right. traditional what dance. Was it, what was it like uh, learning dance abroad and then coming back here and performing it to an audience from here? Was it any different that you feel? A, sh uh, a cultural shock maybe, or uh, you know, uh, the identity was the same, yeah. so it was, yeah. uh, you did it well as well. <laughs> um, I learned different dances, but the main thing that I was more afraid of was um, here in Indonesia, a lot of more people are knowledge about traditional dance, so I have to be very detailed, you know. Mm. And back there, I just have to perform <laughs> and have fun. But I still have fun now. All right, you know, that is all very interesting. You know, we have so much more to discuss mm -hmm. uh, about this, but it's time to take a break for now. We're going to return now to have more discussion on the Kamala Hayati musical with Gemma Citra Nusantara. Stay tuned to the three hour news show. Now, still on See the Stories on the three hour news show, let's have um, uh, our guest again from Gemma Citra Nusantara. Now, when it comes to casting this play, um, how did the, the Gemma Chitra Nusantara find the right people for each role? Okay, um, so we started internally mm -hmm. within Gemma Chitra Nusantara. Um, so our directors, uh, Tengku Rifnu Wikana mm. and Krishna Aditya, um, and their team as well, they were the ones to cast uh, for each role, so mm -hmm. including me. Um, so all of us, so we had to, the casting audition was, um, we had to sing, dance, yeah. and like there were like acting uh, segments that we had to do. Um, so that was fun. Um, and so, <laughs> yeah, they were, you know, they assigned each role to each uh, person and including outside of uh, Gumachi Tranu Santara for mostly the men. Mm -hmm. So the male roles, that's... Um, because we're predominantly women. Yeah, we're predominantly <laughs> women there. <laughs> so. No, but my, my question has got to be, uh, this is just a little follow up. Gumachi Tranu Santara is known for being very traditional. Mm -hmm. This is very different from what Gumachi Tranu Santara usually does. So how does it feel moving along from the very traditional dances 
to contemporary doing musicals? Because you know, musical is not really Indonesian, per yes. se. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Very different, yes. Um, I think it was, it was, it's so different from what we're used to that I think we, we just had to have an open mind mm -hmm. and just try it out. Mm -hmm. um, and it was a struggle at first because the songs were really hard to learn. And oh, yeah. Really hard to, yeah. to sing for all of us. The melody? Mm -hmm. The melody. The melody is if you crazy. do sing, you hear the melody, those are not the easy ones <laughs> no. to sing. Yeah. No. Talk about an I'm telling Lloyd you. Webber right. S. Whoa. Right. Yeah. <laughs> I struggled a lot, but, um, you know, with the, with the right guidance from our vocal coach, Helen and Lohi, um, you know, they helped us so much. And, um, Yes, we improved a lot. A lot. We went from zero to like... 100. 100. Uh, I, I should say that's 1,000. <laughs> 1,000. <laughs> that's right, right. Well, in that case, I want to ask Mas Junior there. Um, you guys mentioned that, you know, uh, you, you cast it inside. It was hard to get uh, the male ones. How did you end up with your role as Cornelis? Oh, oh what did they see in you to fit that? <laughs> because I don't see you, like, as a type of evil. <laughs> wow, oh, oh, thank you very much. <laughs> uh, well, actually, I, I think you need to ask that question to uh, uh, Mr. Ketoris Bukana and Krishna Aditya. Right. But I was assigned the role uh, quite in the very last moment of the show, so uh, mm -hmm. of the rehearsals, I mean. So, I think what they were trying to find through me was how to find someone that could actually be quick enough to learn all the melodies because you know you've said it before the melodies wasn't that easy. Yeah. Um, and and, uh, and well, of course uh, they need male casts. Uh, well, I guess I think uh, the director had then again I said had pretty good faith in me and believe that I can do it. I think. <laughs> And you did well indeed. <laughs> well, um, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Very. Probably this this one goes to Abia. Um, obviously, you are really young, not only <laughs> from the look, but also uh, from uh, the way you uh, see everything towards this traditional culture. Um, as the representation of the current generation, what can you learn from Kamala Hayati's story? You know, as the younger generation, Kumala Hayati was a great hero. And for me, I view her as a role model for a woman especially, you know. And there are many things we can learn from her. But my favorite thing is after listening to the story, you know, after her sadness due to her husband's death, mm -hmm. she continued to inspire so many women, you know, to fight back, to fight for her country. And I could implement that in my daily life. As you know, we have our lows, you know, especially as a teenager, as a young woman, mm -hmm. I still have my lows and I feel like I could turn my sadness and you know, spread positive energy just like Kamala Hayati did. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Well, um, I think that's great that you see that and you should have seen her and like, she was in the final she was in the final scene where there were like a lot of dancers. Oh, I, that's about how I many. Did. I didn't see, see the ensemble though. See, all of us girls, and that is the entirety of the Monkey Santara. <laughs> oh. So oh, yes, I see. actually we have more people, but those are the ones who could make it during that day. <laughs> <laughs> but I have a I have a question for both Carissa and Mas Junior, and also Abia. Actually, all three of you, the during the pandemic, uh, right? Um, it is very difficult to guarantee a performance. And even during your training, during your preparations, how difficult was it? Because there were a lot of health protocols that you yeah. had to adhere to, of course, to keep everybody safe. And there are a lot of people. How, what was it like? Mm -hmm. Yes, so we had to um, rehearse in batches. So, oh, you know, in wow. batches. Yeah, because, you know, we couldn't have so many people. We had like, wow, we had that's, around that's like 90 really... something mm -hmm. cast members. Mm -hmm. Um, and of course we couldn't, you know, we couldn't even find space that's big enough to, mm. you know, hold all of us mm. uh, together. Um, so we had to rehearse in batches, you know, just like, uh, for instance, the Inong Ballet dancers, and then we had the kids, and we also had, um, you know, the male characters. So we were just focusing on different parts of uh, 
the show mm -hmm. at first um, until we were ready to, you know, bring all of us together. Ms. Junior, what was the experience like for you? It was totally awesome. But, well, if you ask <laughs> me about what was the, the greatest difficulties in rehearsing during the pandemic, I think Carissa will share the same answer I'm saying right now is singing with mask on. That is so, so hard. Mm. <laughs> because, you know, you, you as, as a singer, as a singer, you need to breathe well, you know, yeah. you need to manage your breathing. You need to, you know, you need to open your mouth properly. Yes. But then again, you, your mask is on and you need to do it. You know, you have to follow the protocols, right? Mm -hmm. But we have no problems with that. But, but we have to be honest, it was quite hard mm -hmm. singing with mask on. But then, uh, thankfully, we overcome the, the, the difficulties and, well, Carissa nailed it, one thing. <laughs> <laughs> did well indeed. You and did how, too. how about Abia? Well, for me, of course, the same answer. The most challenging part was, you know, dancing and singing with masks, especially in the final performance, you know. Um, those are not really... Those are really intense movements, so singing and dancing with mask was very hard while practicing. It was very hard, but right. it's so, so fun. Right, right. Now, I have one last question uh, for all three of you. Uh, looking at the, you know, Kamala Hayati as a person, as a woman who inspires, what can we learn from her that is relevant today? Look at first. I think um, despite all the struggles that you go through, you or well, at least she, she's still willing to fight for the people that she loves, wow. the land that she loves and her family. That's and I think right. that's like the main message for me. The ultimate least. sacrifice, isn't it? Yes, <laughs> ultimate sacrifice. That's right. Pastor Junio. Uh, she was true to herself. Uh, she was focused and she was determined. So I think that's uh, the three points that I, I think, uh, Came up from the came out from the best of Kamala Hayati. Mm. Yes, that's nice. And from Abia, what can we learn from Kamala Hayati today? Today, you know, she's a brave woman. Uh, she speaks for what she thinks. She has a great courage, and her spirit's beautiful. Wow, mm. that answered it all. <laughs> Thank you so yes. much. Thank you so much. I mean, not only for being here with us and talking about this uh, show, but also to be able uh, to brought this show to life to Indonesia, I mean, in, for, for Jakarta's audience uh, in particular, and also um, because you guys were the first performance in that theater since the pandemic. That's right. So, you know, the joy of, of, of being uh, there as an audience, that sparked lots of memories and nostalgic <laughs> moments for me. Thank you so much. That's right. Well, thank you to all of you for being with us. And once again, this was Gamachitra Nusantara's partnership with Papatong's Art Space, Kamala Hayati, Laskar Inong Bale, Karisa Surya, the main cast, and we have Cornelis the Hutman, Junio, and of course, Abia also represented them from Gumachitra Nusantara. And yeah, there's probably going to be more from the musical. Uh -huh. That's right. I can't <laughs> wait to see that. That's right. Thank you for those of you, you guys for making it.